Yep, I am in New York this week, so that means I don't have to sit in my crappy office to record my lecture. What is that smell? That's disgusting. So I am heading out to find the perfect location from which to dispense my wisdom. Seriously, what is that smell? kind of nice, but there's definitely way too much street noise to make this work. Not here. Definitely not here either. Right here in the middle of Penn Station, maybe? Nah. Way too noisy. This will definitely work. I think maybe my favorite place I've found in the whole city so far. Um, essentially, I just wanted to focus in on three things. When you're analyzing literature, particularly when it comes to interpretation, it's also true for evaluation, but particularly when it comes to interpretation, there's three things essentially that you're paying attention to. The first one of those is symbolism, and I talked a little bit about that last week. Remember, as goes the symbol, so goes the thing that the symbol represents. Um, and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to determine what the symbol is, uh, the main symbol at least, in, in any text. And other times it's really obvious. I think of the short story of the chrysanthemums. You know, Steinbeck goes out of his way to tell us uh, exactly what the main symbol is by naming the story after the main symbol. That doesn't mean that that's the only symbol, uh, but certainly those flowers are significant. They can represent uh, 
really any number of things, but very often flowers have a common uh, thing, I guess you could say it is they represent. Of course, there is uh, the sexual element, particularly where women is concerned. Of course, you've heard, I'm sure, the phrase that when a young girl loses her virginity, she has been deflowered. Um, while I think that there is some element of sexualization in the story, certainly that whole scene where Elisa is fawning like a dog, I think in this case they have far more to do with the idea of fertility than uh, sexuality, although they do certainly have that, that element to them. Obviously you have to have sex in order to reproduce, so there is that whole element that goes along with it. Uh, but she specifically wants to engage in the same kind of activity that her husband is. She wants to participate in the farming. He even says he wishes that she could grow uh, apples, I think it is, uh, that were that big. Um, so clearly there is this sense of uh, ability and work that goes along with that. Uh, the second thing I wanted you to, to pay attention to was uh, characterization. And characterization is simply the way in which a character is presented to us in, uh, in a text. It, obviously this usually happens at the beginning when we first meet them, but I mean with Elisa this is again uh, an easy example I think. Uh, she's dressed in men's clothing, it's blocked, it's heavy. Uh, she's even paying attention to what the men are doing in that moment. She's clearly trying to or desiring to at least be uh, a man or participate in those same things uh, that men do. And additionally, the last thing is is setting. Where is she? You know, she's obviously there in the Salinas Valley, but it's even described as being a closed pot. You put all of these things together, uh, she is somebody who is wanting to be more than she is, but is not allowed to do so. Um, and that's the way interpretation works. All of these pieces of the puzzle, if you will, have to work together. And if they don't work together, you as the person who's making this argument about whatever it is that this text that you're reading means, you need to be able to address whatever those concerns are. If there are quotes that are problematic, if they don't fit with everything that you're coming up with, then you have to offer an explanation for those. I would also say as like an additional piece, clearly the action of the story is significant. It has an arc, it has movement. Um, and you think of a story like the story of an hour uh, where uh, Louise Mallard dies at the end of the story. Clearly that is a, a judgment upon all of the action that has come before it. Or even still sticking with the chrysanthemums. At the end of the story she sees her chrysanthemums tossed on the side of the road and ends up crying weakly like an old woman. The chrysanthemums themselves were discarded and thrown away and of course Elisa herself also feels discarded and thrown away. As goes the symbol, so goes the thing that the symbol represents. This week we're looking at a couple of new short stories and poems. One of those short stories in particular, Araby, is one where you need to pay attention to all three of those key elements, symbol, uh, characterization, and setting. Um, and also there is one last, I think, piece that gets used um, quite obviously in one of the other short stories we're reading called The Open Boat, and that's repetition. Authors don't have the benefit of sort of flashing neon signs, but if they keep repeating something over and over, it's probably important and you should pay attention to it. And then finally, um, you know, we are also reading some, some poems and just some uh, words of wisdom, I think we could say, relative to uh, these kinds of literature. Short stories are a condensed medium. There is no wasted space in a short story. Um, it's not like there's wasted space anywhere in art, but you know, in a novel you've got a couple hundred pages to prove your point. In a short story you have maybe ten, if that. Um, some are of course longer than others. Short is, you know, a, a subjective term, I suppose. Um, but then if that's the case for something like short story, if, if space is at a premium, then clearly when it comes to poetry, uh, the word choice is absolutely essential so we can get really particular we can really dig into what the words mean when we're looking at poetry we can really dig into um, you know intended uses explicitly intended uses of certain words and what it is that those words bring to mind and represent all of this is arguable though that's why we actually take the time to write these arguments um, don't forget, like I said, that when you're working on the second paper, one of your last two papers, either the second paper or the third one, has to uh, analyze a play. For your last paper, you will be analyzing more than one text, so you will have the choice of, uh, if you choose not to write about a play for this paper, you will have the choice to write about a play in the last one, and you'll still have uh, another text, because you're going to be writing about more than one of the texts, analyzing more than one of the texts 
for the last paper. It's so cool being here. I wish I could record like this every week. <laughs> it for New York. Turns out that the quietest time to walk around in the city happens to be at 5 in the morning as you're leaving and on your way to the airport. So I at least hope you enjoyed this rather different lecture and I'll try to keep doing some relatively more interesting things uh, from here on out. Man, even at 5 in the morning that smell is still here. I don't, at this point I don't even want to know what it is. Thank you.